back? Yeah. 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 You keep it right there. I'll be right over. Wow! Boy, oh boy. Never thought I'd live to see the day. And it's mine. All mine. Yep. You've been waiting a long time. But it's yours now. Here are your keys. And what I hear are your keys. Oh, boy, what music to the ears. What beautiful words. What wonderful words. You know, that could be you. Yes, sir, that could be you riding off in that brand new Chevrolet. More new Chevrolets are being delivered than any other make of car. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold everything. It could be you. It could be me. Look. What I want to know is when do I get my Chevrolet? Now, a lot of people I know have gotten their cars, and they haven't had to wait as long as I have either. And some of them have gotten them from you, too, Bill. Now, what am I, a forgotten man or something? <laughs> For two cents, I'd take my order and... I know, I know. There's a great deal in what you say. You have waited a long time. A lot of people have gotten new cars sooner than you have. But have you heard the whole story? Well, then why not see the rest of the film? Oh, I know, just looking at a film isn't going to get you a new Chevrolet any sooner, but... Well, okay, okay, let's look at it. Fine. What are you waiting for? More new Chevrolets are being delivered than any other make of car. Of course, it isn't exactly the way it was in 1941 yet. When we ordered a new car, we got it. Just a matter of a day or two, maybe less. Yet that's all you had to do. Just hop in and drive them away, remember? As a matter of fact, that could be you in that 1941 Chevy eight years ago. Hey, that is me. In those days, our cars were as much a part of our daily lives as they are now. But we didn't realize then just how vital a part until a certain make of car called a Volkswagen came out. So we stopped making cars. We certainly didn't mind then. Never mind the cars, it was given tanks, given guns. We took everything that came along too. Share the ride, gas rationing. We drove them down to the cord and then some. We fought off the breakdowns. We read and dreamed about the new post-war cars. And then it came. It felt good to let up a bit. Yes, sir. Sure felt good. But for Chevrolet, DJ Day was the signal to get going on the production of cars and trucks for civilian use. And Chevrolet was not caught napping. Even before the war, Chevrolet had completed new facilities, making possible the production of more cars than had ever before been contemplated by a single manufacturer. Then, as the war progressed, Chevrolet realized that even this would not be enough. It was recognized that even greater expansion would be necessary. Men threw away the clock and forgot about such niceties as working in the daytime and sleeping at night. It was drive, drive, drive. At the drafting table, in the office, at home, late at night, the new factories had to be designed, built, equipped. And that wasn't all. Thousands of new employees had to be hired and trained. Thousands of new employees had to be trained or retrained in new skills and in the use of new tools and new materials. New materials developed during the war called for new machines. And new machining techniques had to be worked out. Thousands of small parts were completely redesigned to make use of the best possibilities in the new war-developed materials. Chevrolet did all these things, and Chevrolet was ready. Ready to make twice as many cars and trucks as in the best previous production year. That's all well, very well and good. But the war's been over a long time now. What's holding up the parade? But that's not the whole story. No amount of advanced planning could entirely overcome the severe shortages of vital parts. That was the last master brake cylinder. The line stopped. 
Ever stop to think just how it would be to put a car together without a master brake cylinder or any other vital part? About 15,000 parts go into a single new Chevrolet. Multiply each of these parts by the thousands of new cars coming off the lines each day, and you have just part of a headache. We need those steering knuckles. Buy them in the front and make it fast. Get me Terry Tom next. Make it fast. <laughs> Purchasing always wants everything fast. And it's got to be. Every one of those 15,000 parts, down to the smallest bolt, has got to be on hand at the right place at the right time or the lines stop. But the lines must not stop. Okay, we'll take the two boats. We need those boats. Now, when can we have them? Got to have those carburetors no later than Tuesday. Find out if he wants us to come after him. Put every man you have on the job. We're depending on having it here tonight. Now, what about that steel? Bar stop. Sheep. We need all we can get. Keep the lines moving. Get out and get after parts, materials, wherever and whenever they could be found. Remember that day in the local hardware? That chap seemed eager to lay his hands on every bolt in the store. Should have followed him around. Our friend went to every store in town, and he wasn't the only one on the job either. It wasn't easy. Manufacturers of refrigerators, locomotives, washing machines, lawnmowers, all were in the same boat. They all had to have those parts and materials, too. A dozen, two dozen, a gross at a time, rounded up from every possible source, kept the line going. Remember that time at the airport? That's what I said. Fly that load to Flint and pronto. What's in those boxes, anyway? Gold? No, nope. carburetors, sweetheart. Just carburetors. <laughs> Just carburetors. Just enough to keep the line going at Flint until the main shipment arrived. Today, there are still not enough materials to make all the cars Chevrolet is equipped to turn out, plus all the needed products thousands of other manufacturers are making. Even so, Chevrolet is building more cars than any other automobile manufacturer. And in view of all the facts, that is a production miracle. Where's yours? Well, where's mine? Mine. Been waiting for over a year. I'm a doctor. I must have a car. What do you mean, Doc? You want me to carry the bottles around on my back? <laughs> See what I mean? Today, there are at least four people who want new cars for every one new car prospect in 1941. So, even in spite of geared-up production, there just aren't enough new Chevrolets to go around. Yet, that is. In other words, those years of not making cars have caught up with all of us. Things started to happen to that familiar parade along the highway. Many cars suddenly dropped out of that picture of American life. Cars that we depended on. Cars that we needed. Now, in normal times, this man would have replaced his worn-out model with the good, dependable used car. But that good, dependable 41 isn't there because its original owner can't buy a new Chevrolet to replace it. Four years of no new car production snarled the entire chain of used car distribution. And here's another thing. The demand of an entirely new market had to be met, too. People who never owned a car before were now able to afford one. More people than ever before can afford a new car. New families are being formed. And you can't take your best girl out on a bike. Chevrolets are wanted in every community in America. And long before the war's end, General Motors and Chevrolet laid their plans for the distribution of new cars on the community basis. The fairest and most equitable plan was to deliver to each community a fixed percentage of new cars according to the number of new cars delivered to that same community in 1941. Vital community needs came first. It was and is to your best interests that these community needs are met first. And then, as rapidly as cars can be produced, more and more people of the community 
are becoming Chevrolet owners. Yes, sir, it could be you riding off in that brand new Chevrolet. It could be you. Chevrolet and your dealer are doing everything possible so that for you and your neighbors, at the earliest moment, it will be you.